your review show. Then we had to the real life heat between Triple H and Shane McMahon. I never thought they had real, real like heat, but um, let's see what what it's about though. Triple H, he has his history of conflicts with people, mainly those who are in front of the camera, like him, meaning the wrestlers. Whether it was Bret Hart, whether it was The Rock. Whether it was even to the level of Crash Holly or Rikishi, Rob Van Dam, Booker T, whoever. He affected a lot of people's push and careers throughout the card for 20 plus years to this day. Now, obviously, to this day, he's in the position he's in now. But he's the boss of the WWE. Basically, he's the boss. He always came off as someone that would do anything to be at a certain level and remain there. Now, wrestling has always been uh, political, and it always will be. This is one of the flaws of AEW. They made this company thinking, there's going to be no politics and no favoritism. I'm sorry, wrestling is a beast you cannot change or tame. The only way there will not be politics in wrestling is if you, I don't know, deleted wrestling. But usually the politics were wrestler versus wrestler. It turned into... Triple H versus certain people corporately. Really? Now, Stephanie McMahon, she's had her problems with certain people backstage. Bruce Prichard. Brian Gewertz. Vince Russo. Dusty Rhodes. And a lot of her conflict is Stephanie McMahon is trying to be Vince McMahon. Oh, um, she's trying to be the chairwoman and fought like father, like like daughter, right? Vince McMahon is known as a tyrant. He he he's known as a list of things. Let, let's not go to that. But then you have the other two McMahons, which are Linda and Shane. Now, from all accounts. Many people, they've always said Linda McMahon, she's a very nice individual, very caring individual, very thoughtful, soft-spoken individual. The complete opposite of Stephanie and Vince McMahon. Shane McMahon, people who've been around him say, you know, Shane in the 90s, he was into like rap music and he liked ECW and he always liked uh, UFC since it began in 93 and, you know. Shane liked them rap, rap music. Which I'm not surprised. His theme song is a rap music. You feel me? Shane is into Jordans and he's into sports and things like that. Okay. Completely different than Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon believes Raw is a sport. SmackDown is his sport. The only music McMahon knows is Jim Johnston's compositions. He's a man. He's a man. <laughs> That's one of the all-time greats. Boy, I tell you. But um, hit the like button. Share this video. Subscribe to the channel. This video, as most videos on the channel, are from donations and requests from viewers, listeners just like you. If you want to support the channel, if you have a request, you can donate to the Cash App in the description or hit the super thanks, super like, super chat, whatever the case, and leave a line of what you want the video to be about. Now, when Vince McMahon gets in position where he's running the WWF after he buys it from his father, the thinking was always the McMahon family is going to pass this company to the next, to the next, to the next. You know, from Vince McMahon's father, his father, all the way, and it will go to the kids. Now, the kids were thought of being Shane, not Stephanie, at the time in the 80s, the 90s. More than the 90s. It was seen as... So Shane was originally, after, like... I feel like Vince McMahon like left, so Shane was supposed to like like originally like be the chair, was supposed to like take over like like his pops's um spot. Oh man, which which it makes sense. You feel me? That you know that's Vince McMahon's son. Oh. Vince McMahon one day, if he does give this company up, it'll be to Shane. But you know, it wasn't. It's it, it, he gave instead he gave it to um his son-in-law Triple H. Which Triple H is doing a good job. He's doing a great job, though. I think Shane should come, come too. Like, 
Why, why, why they can't they all work together? They all family. You feel me? Shane, Stephanie, Triple H. You know, without Vince, like they could work. They all could work together. Now, Shane McMahon, who is the older sibling of Stephanie McMahon, obviously. Shane McMahon worked as a referee in the late 80s, early 90s on the WWF um, weekend shows, I believe. And I think he worked on the C house shows in the Hogan era. They had the A shows, the B shows, the C shows. The A shows were basically Hogan. The B shows might have been Honky Tonk and Savage. And then the C shows would be like, you know, uh, Dino Bravo or, you know, basically the tiers of the roster are how the shows were determined for the most part. This is when WWF was huge in that late 80s, early 90s, Hulk Hogan era, era, and they were running the wrestlers into the ground. They're, they're running three towns a night every night for years. Even the travel schedule made no sense. You know, one night they're in New York, then the next night they have to be in Miami, then they're in Portland. It's like absurd. Mad flights. Damn. It's not logical now where it's like, okay... You know, tonight we're in New York, then tomorrow we're in New Jersey, then the next day we're in D.C., then the next day we're in Philly. You know, that's logical. You know, tonight we're in L.A., then tomorrow we're in Phoenix, then the next night we're in Tucson. Now, back then it was, we're on the East Coast, now we're going to the West Coast, now we're going down South, now we're going overseas. It's just absurd travel. Who in, the, who in that era just thought, they, they just thought the wrestlers were just animals and you just ship them off and they wonder why they're all deceased now because they're on medications and drugs and all these things to deal with the nonsense damn too much work but in that late time it was seen as you know shane is very young now but one day this will be his company you know you pass the business down to your son not your daughter that's kind of like tradition american tradition italian tradition you know you pass it to the son and when you get to the late 90s this is when, you know, Shane, you know, he's he's much older. I believe he, you know, he went through college, what have you. And he's going to be written on Raw and Heat as a TV character. So they introduced Shane, I believe, in 98. Vince Russo writes him in. And then in 99, during the, I believe it was the, the Undertaker ministry, they... You know, they introduced Stephanie. I think they had like Ken Shamrock had to go get Stephanie from The Undertaker, whatever the case. So they write her on, they write on Linda, and then it's kind of like, you know, Vince and Shane versus, versus Linda and Stephanie. And they do the storyline where all four of them have 25% of the company. So Vince McMahon, you can't do what you want and all this type of thing. So basically, it's a family feud storyline. And they kind of did this family feud thing for like years. Whenever the ratings dipped, they went right back to Shane, Stephanie, Vince. Whenever the ratings dipped, when they did the invasion, bring back Shane, Shane versus Vince. When they, you know, um, you know, in 2002, you know, Stephanie, she's managing Jericho and Triple H, and then she's gone, and then make her the GM, and then bring in 03, bring Shane back, and then Kane tombstones him after he tombstones Linda and tombstones your grandmother and your goldfish. 06. Kane was wilding back back in the day, bro. Back in 03, Kane did not care, bro. Kane was on rocks, bro. He set Jay on fire. He tombstone Lippin Linda McMahon. He be break up R V D mad times. He broke up Sam McMahon. He he like he electric he like like electric damn bro. He shocked Sam McMahon's testicles. All that, bro. Like, he was wilding. The king was wilding back in 03. They bring back DX, and then now it's Shane and Vince versus DX. They always would, they never ended the, sto the storyline. Then they brought it back the year when everyone got hurt for WrestleMania. Bring back Shane after like 15,000 years, and he faces Undertaker. So they always went back to this well. But that's on the storyline front. Yo, who remembers that McMahon's and DX feud? I remember that feud. Back in 2006 and shit, like they be feuding DX and McMahon, they be feuding for the what was that on the summer, summer that whole summer in like 06. You feel me? It started with Shawn Michaels and Vince McMahon, and then 
Triple H and, and Shane like got involved and had, which led to the DX and McMahon's, which ended at Unforgiven 2006. Now, in the late 90s, the idea, like I said, was Shane would one day take over this company. Shane has always been around Vince. Shane would be there when Vince would talk to talent or if Shane or Vince would have booking meetings. And Vince McMahon would let it be known, you know, always treat the wrestlers like this. Don't give them this information. Hide this from them, but tell them this. All the promoter dirty tactics. Never let the talent know how much they're really worth because then they can use that and hold it over you. All these type of things. Did you hit the like button, damn it? Share this video. Subscribe to this channel if you're not. Now, when you get into the early 2000s, this is when Stephanie McMahon, she takes more of a liking to being a part of the behind the scenes of the show. Now, Stephanie McMahon would be in meetings, and she anything that she'd verbalize, even to this day, is something she heard Vince McMahon say. Stephanie McMahon would try and take certain reins or certain authority as if she knew the wrestling industry. And it would be a suicide mission correcting her backstage. You're going to correct Vince McMahon's daughter? Stephanie McMahon would oftentimes overstep her bounds. Many writers have said this. Many agents have said this. She would try and take over or boss around many people acting like Vince McMahon. Shane McMahon was not like this. But when Vince McMahon saw this, Vince McMahon's whole thing in life is being aggressive. Shane is more laid back. So Vince McMahon was more attracted to the way Stephanie carried herself, even though everyone else hates it and can't stand it and knows she... Damn, bro. Stephanie taking out and taking her father's route. You feel me? does not have the credentials conditioning she's not qualified to be running anything or writing the show but Vince McMahon is also it's also his daughter so in the fall of 2000 they make Stephanie McMahon the head writer now if you watch the Raws and Smackdowns at this time around September they made Stephanie a head writer that's crazy back in this was back in 2000s bro so Stephanie had to be like in her 20s and shit mid 20s Early to mid twenties or some shit like that, and she's a mid writer, and she's the writer of the sh these shows. Wow. October two thousand, the show started to get very boring. Go watch a raw from like March two thousand, and then watch a raw from November two thousand. The November two thousand is very more slow paced and boring. Mm -hmm. Not much is happening. It kind of became formulaic because Stephanie McMahon is not a writer. She's not a booker. She's doing what she already saw everyone else do, which is what many people who should not be writing do. Her writing, her being the head of creative, the head writer, that destroyed the ratings and destroyed the show into 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, and when they finally took her off around 05, 06, the damage was done. That is one of the greatest Horrible, bad decisions Vince McMahon has ever made, making Stephanie McMahon the head of creative. She didn't have booking instincts. She didn't have a knowledge of history. Stephanie McMahon was the type of person she didn't grow up watching wrestling. She didn't go up. She didn't grow up going to shows as a fan. She was at the show because it's her father's show. She never had the experience of watching episodic wrestling and rooting or booing and you know trying to save up money for a ticket to make it to a show she never did so her only view of wrestling is well my father would do it like this so I'm gonna do it like this and no one can tell me anything this is where her conflict came with Paul Heyman so she kinda like a like a like a brat or some shit like that you feel me let me know hey, bro, but yo, let me know what y'all think bro Heyman would challenge Vince McMahon, challenge Michael Hayes, challenge the room. She would get offended because it's her father rather than be professional and rather than think outside of what her father conditioned her to think wrestling is. So when she's with Triple H in real life, this rubs off and Heyman, this is why Heyman always has heat and they will never let him truly be involved in the show. And when Vince McMahon saw this in Triple H and Stephanie, 
how they're one unit and they're basically both following him. Triple H is trying to be Vince McMahon too. Shane was not. So this creates a division because the whole company was supposed to be Shane McMahon's, but now in the last 10 years, it's been positioned as Stephanie and Triple H will take over. This causes a natural heat between Triple H, Stephanie, and Shane. Now it's not a heat where they're about to fight at Thanksgiving, or but it's a heat of its awkwardness. This has been said by many people who's around. There's like an awkwardness when Shane and Triple H are in the room over this was supposed to be Shane's company. And, you know, what really was the death nail of Vincent Man giving up on Shane taking the company is when Shane left the company in 2009. Because that's one thing about Vincent Man. If you leave him, it's a problem for him because Vince McMahon was abandoned as a child. It, 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 it takes him, it gives him flashbacks of growing up in that North Carolina trailer park, not being truly loved. Oh, Vince McMahon grew up in, in so Vince, so Vince grew up in a trailer park? I, I did not know that shit, bro. His father. So if you leave him, it hurts him. That's why he still has not got, he's not got over Lex Luger and Savage. Hogan was different. Certain wrestlers are different, but he, he still holds on to these things to this day. So that's the heat and beef between Shane and Triple H. It's over, obviously, the company, the direction of it, who's going to control it. Now, let's say Vince McMahon kicks the bucket. I can see Shane McMahon trying to, okay, well, he's gone, but I had the rights to this, and I can see him trying to fight over this. Because Triple H, is, he doesn't own this company. They merged with the UFC's owner. But the direction is being put in the hands of Triple H. And then Stephanie, apparently she left the company last year. But who, who knows if that's real? But Shane is still around sometimes. It's all a bunch of awkwardness. But that's the truth between the beef and heat of these two. Like, share, comment. Okay, that's the view. So, Leah, let me know what y'all think about this, like, real, this, like... Supposedly, like, you know, like, beef between Triple H and Shane McMahon. I mean, they, they're, like, they family at the end of the day, you feel me? Like, you know, that's his, like, that's his brother-in-law and shit, you know? I, you know, and I think they should all work, to, work together, you feel me? Why not? Shane McMahon, now Vince McMahon is out of the picture. Shane McMahon could come and help, help, help around. Vince, and... Yeah, yeah, Triple H, Shang, Stephanie could come back. So yeah, bro. Now that Vince is out, you feel me? Now you can make the company like even like better. You feel me? More watchable. So yeah, let me know what y'all think. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. I know the vibes. We're really checking out you are.